Hello and welcome to another great week on the Jet Set. It's our final show for 2020. Coming up this week, we've got your in-flight entertainment update. And we're grabbing a bite to eat at the amazing Modena restaurant in Washington, D.C. Plus, we've got your travel headlines coming up. You're watching the Jet Set. Welcome aboard. Are you ready to go? Bobby Laurie and Nikki Noya have your ticket to travel, food, fitness, and everything you need for an on-the-go lifestyle. It's time to Jet Set. It's time to pop the cork of travel news on this week's edition of Here's This, powered by TravelPulse.com. We previously reported on cruise lines simulating voyages, and now we have a bit more information on what, to, what you can expect during one of these stationary sailings. Testing will be thorough, and cruise lines will be tasked with conducting laboratory testing of all passengers and crew on both the day of embarkation and the day of disembarkation, with results becoming available before the ship sets sail, and of course, before the passengers are allowed to disembark the ship at the conclusion of their trip. Passengers and crew will also need to be tested again post disembarkation. Huh. Now, moving forward, cruise passengers can expect strict face covering and social distancing requirements, as well as elevated standards for hand washing and sanitizing to prevent the potential spread of COVID-19 on board. Cruise ships will also be required to undergo more frequent and effective sanitation. The CDC will also require that cruise lines modify meal service and entertainment venues on board to allow for adequate social distancing, so that also means you're going to be looking at changes to the traditional cruise line buffet and spaced out seating at other restaurants and venues on board. How soon are you going on a cruise? Oh boy, well, mm -hmm. at least sailings from the States. Uh, we are looking at those sailings being canceled through March at this point. Uh -huh. So at least not till March. <laughs> I don't think I would be going on a cruise until the vaccine is readily available. Mm -hmm. um, I think I think it should be once you get vaccinated, there's got to be some sort of proof. Yeah. Then you can you should be allowed to board the ship. Mm -hmm. We should point out that Nikki's holding a phone because we're live on Facebook. Yes. <laughs> so yes. join Thanks. us on Facebook, <laughs> facebook.com slash the Jet TV. <laughs> I think I'm with you. I mean, you just love cruises so much I and I know you just can't wait. And now all of a sudden I love cruises because I just can't wait to go anywhere. Well, I mean, so. you went on a Viking cruise and you loved it. I love Viking cruises. Yeah. Yeah. Brad and I had our honeymoon around the Baltic Sea. It was one of the best trips of my entire life. It was yeah. fantastic. And Brad, Brad and I went to Cuba last, was it not, not, not last December, maybe the December before. Uh -huh. That was also long Viking as well. I mean, I, for vacation, usually cruise on Norwegian, they've always been ahead of the curve when mm -hmm. it comes to canceling everything, trying to maintain safety. Yeah. I think when they start back up, I have faith enough in them mm -hmm. that I would probably get on the ship because mm -hmm. they've been the first to cancel. Yeah. So okay. they're doing stuff to be proactive, not reactive. Okay. When are so, you guys going to go on a cruise? Hmm? After okay. a slow start at the beginning of 2021, travel experts are predicting a positive booking trend as clients continue planning trips for the coming year. Now, the host agency sees a light at the end of the tunnel as travelers are motivated to book. Now, especially people are booking for 2021 because uh -huh. there is no cancellation penalty charges. There's yes. no cancellation fees or change fees or any of that. Mm -hmm. And United Airlines, also, I think I think they're the only airline so far is keeping that change uh, where there's no cancellation fees or change mm -hmm. fees in place indefinitely. Well, that's really smart because we really don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we just had our good friend of the show, yes. Melinda Fortunato, who was like, that's why it's a really good idea also to have a travel advisor because the rules are still changing all the time and go with those companies that have, you know, cancellation it's true. policies. And uh, on Facebook, we're, say, we're saying that yes, uh, that people love cruises too. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily the right time to be getting on the cruise ship, mm -hmm. but in the future, they wouldn't be worried about getting on a cruise ship. I cannot wait. I can't either. I'm going to go everywhere. That's all I want for Christmas. <laughs> but I don't see a cruise under the tree. I just see the price tag. We'll be right back in 30 seconds with more of the Jet Set. Watch me. I'm going to be like, I'm cruising here. I'm cruising there. You guys won't be able to catch me. It's time to look at what entertainment to add to the queue on this edition of In-Flight Entertainment Update. Read this, Finding the Good Life, A Journey to Complete Health and Wellness Through Fitness and Nutrition by Dr. Eugene Antonucci, a guide to health and well-being through the experience and words of a dentist whose own experience treating thousands of patients for over 30 years has taught him about overall health and well-being. Hi, Dr. Jane. Okay, listen to this, home cooking. 
This podcast, more people are cooking at home during quarantine, driven by some combination of boredom and necessity. But limited access to groceries can challenge even the most experienced chefs. Salt, fat, acid, heat cookbook author and chef Simon Nosret and veteran podcaster Rishi Keshkaway have teamed up to answer any and all quarantine cooking questions. That sounds good. Okay, watch this. Jingle Jangle, an imaginary world comes to life in a holiday tale of an eccentric toy maker, his adventurous granddaughter, and a magical invention that has the power to change their lives forever. Take a look. Once upon a time lived the greatest inventor that ever there was, Geronicus Jangle. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas indeed! Jangle, for the last 30 years, You've been promising something sensational. I need more time. Either come up with the money you've borrowed by Christmas or show me the revolutionary invention you once promised. I would lose everything. What's wrong, Grandpa? I had a perfect life. A loving family and a magical shop. Till an old friend took it all. But he didn't get this. Young lady, if I know anything about your grandfather, there's something sensational in that. Wow. I'm Buddy. Whoa. <laughs> I'm actually flying. <laughs> if I have that toy, I'll be unstoppable. It's foolproof. <laughs> you are proof that there are fools. Fools, 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 fools. <laughs> We're talking safaris with Zababu Adventures right after a quick break. You don't want to miss it. My mom's joined on Facebook Live now. Hi, Carol! Mm -hmm. Now we're in for it. Do you dream of exploring the plains of the Serengeti? Does your mind daydream of safari? Because mine does. Well, if so, a trip to Tanzania might be the thing for you. We had the chance to sit down with Denise Brown, co-founder of Sababu Safaris, who shared how she found her purpose in sharing her love of this incredible country. Denise, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. So Tanzania has a very special place in my heart. It's where I spent my honeymoon. I was there for a very long time and I got the chance to go all over this extraordinary, beautiful country. I so, saw the picture. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so That's excited to, to talk to you and about Sababu Safari. So first of all, tell me a little bit about Sababu Safaris. Sure. So, you know, a few years back, um, uh, my, one of my first visits to Tanzania myself and I'm sure you can attest to that. It's very easy to fall in love with a country. Um, I, I just couldn't turn back. I, I just utterly fell in love with it and I wanted to stay in touch. I became friends with my guide back then and um, we, you know, we stayed in touch. We had the same um, ideas. One of the things that really stood out to me on my first visit is that you know i've done i've done a lot of research myself before i actually decided to go on a trip myself and I, it was just me i went there by myself so i wanted to make sure that i really go with a good uh, tour operator but what i saw and all my research and also specifically when i was there is that the vast majority of tour operators they you know take you they pick you up at the airport they take you into the national parks um but there's not really many um, opportunities for you as a guest to interact with the local communities in an authentic way. Um, most of these so-called cultural experiences, um, you know, they're more or less commercialized. Uh, you know, a lot of operators take you to commercialized Maasai villages and they dance for you. You buy some jewelry, then you, this happens for about a half hour and then you move on and, and that's it. And I really saw that there was a, a gap there are some operators who do offer something like that, but I really wanted to make a change in that regard. And I, I, I saw a gap in the safari industry that really offers guests the opportunity to authentically connect with the local opportunities, uh, with the local communities, but also make a positive impact at the same time. So there's a win-win situation for everyone involved. And that's basically what Sababu Safaris is all about. And 
hence the name Sababu, which is um, Swahili for purpose. They actually say Hakuna Matata in Tanzania. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, they don't. So let's say if someone wants to do a more adventurous trip or someone wants to do a more nature-driven trip, do you guys do different tours? Yes, yeah, so all of our tours are completely private and customizable. So whatever you want to do, we will put together a customized itinerary for you. Um, and you can also, you know, have a little bit of everything. You, if, you know, if you want to go hiking, you can, for example, you can climb Mount Kilimanjaro. If that's a little bit too much for you, you can also just do a day hike. Um, and, you know, there's several opportunities. You can go um, biking, kayaking, if you really want more of an active safari. Um, there's also Zanzibar if you want to end your safari on a, a, a beach vacation. So there's endless opportunities. And of course, as I mentioned before, there's also a lot of opportunities to get to know the local communities and fully immerse yourself in the local culture. We were talking about how you immediately fall in love with Tanzania. And for me, it was the people. The people are so gracious. They are lovely. It was just they were amazing and I can see why you would want to stay there. It is a well, magical based place. Based on all the outdoor and adventurous <laughs> activities, I now see why this was perfect for her honeymoon. <laughs> yeah, so I'm glad you had a good time. And yeah, Gibson does have one of the uh, best, like, best cuisines. So the kitchen there is amazing. It, I mean, it was so good. <laughs> and actually, we did go to Zanzibar and it was a very short trip over to Zanzibar and it was nice to have a totally different experience while you're also in Tanzania, I, I think everyone should know, like, it's super close and it's like you're going to really? another world. You know, you should come with me. I'm, I'm in. I was glamping. <laughs> I was camping and I was glamping. Actually, Denise, that's another question. <laughs> kind of, you know, I'm not the best camper. Do you have different levels of kind of safari as well? Yes, we do. So we don't do, you know, the the general basic camping that you think of when you think of camping in the U.S., for example. Um, so all of our safaris, they start at a mid-range mid uh, accommodations, which are more, you know, basic glamping, as you said. Um, so that you'll sleep okay, in a I'm big in. tent. Yeah. Um, you usually have like a queen size or a king size bed. You have your ensuite bathroom. So everything, all the amenities you have, you, you'll definitely be comfortable. And then, you know, there's no limit as to how high end you can go from there. Yeah, so glamping... Um, is the perfect word for that, as you already mentioned. Now, also, so when you are on safari, you have guides and drivers and porters, and a lot of people said, oh my gosh, are you, you're going out in the Serengeti. Yeah. I felt totally safe and at ease. The park rangers that you guys have over there are so amazing and the coolest guys ever, <laughs> and some females too. They were really, really cool. Hey, Denise, where can people go for more information so they can book their safari? So in general, on our website, www.sababu-safaris.com, um, we also have a few links on, you know, COVID updates and all of that. Um, so you can find a lot of information on our website um, and with other links that give you more information to, you know, entry requirements and all of that. The very nature of a private safari in and of itself makes the trip very safe because as I said, you land, your private guy will pick you up. And from that point on, you'll be in your private vehicle um, and you'll be out in nature in the middle of nowhere um, and you will barely meet any other guests, especially It's literally especially the epitome right of social distancing. <laughs> <laughs> Denise, thank you so much for being on the show and we will see you in Tanzania soon. Thanks so thank much you. for having me. We've got to take another break, but when we come back, we're visiting one of my favorite DC eateries. Don't go anywhere. Which one is it? Modena. You have so many. I know, but this one's Modena. <laughs> Since we haven't been able to jump on a plane and fly to another country in what seems like forever, <laughs> we've been trying to eat our way around the world. <laughs> and Modena, run by Chef John Melfi, was the trip to Italy we all needed. Right, Bobby? Absolutely. Delicious. Chef, thank you so much for having us this afternoon. 
everything looks like a piece of art. And so I was reading a little bit about you and not only are you an amazing chef, but you really are an artist because all of these colors and all of the plating is just fantastic. What's the inspiration and the, the passion behind all of this deliciousness? Well, first of all, thank you. And, <laughs> and it's our pleasure to be here. Um, but, you know, it really comes from being, you know, a young kid um, growing up with food around grandma. Sure. Um, so, you know, that's been kind of my, my little catch that we do. We do a lot of plays on food. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a few dishes around my grandmother's uh, cuisine that are like totally twisted. Yeah. And she probably rolled over. <laughs> um, but God bless you, you know. But um, so it, it is. It's, it's to stay true to who we are, you know, or who I am. But also, you know, do something to stay in tune. But then we go from there and say, you know, textures, puree, gelée. You have a gelée actually on your salad. But like a gelée, a puree, uh, something crispy and crunchy, like the croquant on the uh, pear tart. So you're going through all of the senses, the smell and the sights and the tastes and everything here. Modena name came from Amelia di Romana. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of those influences on the food, but we're not restricted to that region. So we're doing regional, you know, Italian cuisine, a cuisine from every, all over Italy. But the focus is Amelia di Romana on the cuisine. Fantastic. What's coming up? What's coming up for the holidays? What's coming up? What's coming oh, a up? lot, a lot yeah. really. Um, so some of our treasures that are here, mm. we have burgundy truffles and yeah. sukake mushrooms, which are in Japan regarded to be much better and more highly regarded than a truffle. Um, it's kind of their truffle. Um, so we're running into, you know, brassicas and mustard greens and rapinis and Brussels sprouts mm -hmm. that you see here. Um, who doesn't like tortellini and brodo? So we're doing our <laughs> tortellini and brodo, perfect time, you know, not a head so of he, soup. Yeah, mm -hmm. He takes the classic dishes mm -hmm. and enhances them. Mm -hmm. and that's what, that's, that's Modena. It's modern. It's a, it yeah. is. How do you kind of work with your team to think of new things to put on the menu? Do you kind of like wake up and say, oh, I really am in the mood to try this? Or how does it all kind of come together? Very good question, good question. Well, first of all, family, you know, we are like a family here, you know, and Shook knows that. It's my second go around with him and uh, I enjoy my job a lot and, he, and he's a big part of it. Um, but sometimes I do wake up, sometimes I can't go to bed, to be quite <laughs> honest, and I'm thinking of things. I have a notebook at home, you know, sometimes I use my phone, but, mm -hmm. you, know, um, what, you know, what to do next, or something that, you know, sometimes it'll start with something you see, and you say, well, I want to do my version, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Or how can I put something different in place? So we start with good ingredients, and then I make this chart, and I kind of draw lines, and then say puree, <laughs> gelée, roasted, shaved, raw, you know? Mm -hmm. When, what's, what's some of your favorites here? Well, you know, I love his pastas. I mean, mm -hmm. everything he cooks is wonderful. I mean, he, he's such a talented chef. But I love some of the pastas he's done. And every time I come to eat here, um, and I said, just make me one, what do you like? <laughs> just, yeah, just, just surprise make, me. Yeah, just surprise me. me. And it's always been a, always a pleasant surprise. Well, Bobby. Yes. <laughs> it's our Christmas episode. It is, and our last one of 2020. Well, let's think about this past year. What were some of... The highlights oh of 2020. Were there highlights in 2020? <laughs> I mean, geez. I think we, you know what though? I think making kind of the changes that we had to do, but we still made it work. Yeah. We did. And we kind of all just came together and, you know, kept going, I think. I know. So we are live on Facebook right now, which you should follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash the Jet Set TV. We're asking you the same question. What are some of the highlights for you for 2020 and what are you most looking forward to in 2021? I think it's interesting because I think a highlight for some people will be even when the pandemic is finally over, mm -hmm. I think a lot of the changes we've just went through are going to be changes that we actually stick with for a period of time. So maybe at least here in the States, because we know you watch in 13 other countries too, mm -hmm. we didn't really know what a work-life balance was. Uh -huh. But I think we now know that going forward because mm -hmm. we've all been working from home <laughs> for so long. I mean, obviously we're not at home right now, but for a couple months we did the show from home. We did. Uh -huh. And uh, I think Samantha that's made a few appearances on yeah. the show. And mm -hmm. I think that that's something that would be a highlight, I guess. You can you had to learn how to adapt. We did. We learned how to adapt. We actually it was nice. Actually, I would have never had that time with Samantha yeah. at home, and she saw mom going to work, and you know 
being with the people that she loves and saw so us. what are you most looking forward to then in 2021 everything that's not 2020. <laughs> <laughs> all right we have to take one final break but we'll be back with more of the jet set in a minute There's nothing better than a hot cup of coffee or hot cocoa on a cold winter's day. And Laura Delutri, home and lifestyle expert, is here today to help you elevate your brewing experience. What's brewing, Laura? Yes, it's time to elevate your at-home coffee routine to new delicious heights with a brand new Keurig K Supreme Plus single serve coffee maker. The first brewer to feature the new innovative multi-stream technology for full flavor and aroma. With the K Supreme Plus brewer, you'll be able to customize the strength, size, and temperature to fit your lifestyle day after day for an exceptionally brewed cup every time. From a stronger, hotter cup or a brew hot over ice for a refreshing iced coffee, no matter what time of year. This sleek coffee maker also features programmable favorites for up to three users to be able to save their own individual brewing preferences. Talk about convenience. And bonus tip, if you're thinking about what to wrap up for the holidays and looking for a best value gift that keeps on giving, cup after cup, look no further than the K Supreme Plus Brewer for just about anyone on your list. Find at major retailers or Keurig.com for $189.99. Get $40 off at select retailers while supplies last through 1226. Thanks for watching this week. Make sure to keep up with all our adventures. Especially on Facebook, facebook.com slash TV. You can join us live when we film the show.